And we are back with the four years later sequel to Lan Nai Kai's sort of Spirit Warrior adaptation Peacock King Saga of the Phoenix, which is apparently slightly more well known on the interwebs in the West than its predecessor almost entirely because its translated title is accidentally similar to that one X-Men storyline they keep making terrible movies out of and it keeps pinging in search engines. Still better than either of the actual X-Men movies. Anyway, with the King of Hell having been defeated at the conclusion of the previous film, Hell Virgin Ashura is now free to walk the earth doing whatever in the care of her demon-fighting Buddhist exorcist companions, with Yen Bao returning as only in the movie's co-protagonist Peacock, while Kujaku is now played by Hiroshi Abe, an actor who fans of Japanese film and television have probably seen around, but I have a feeling Westerners who follow this show in particular might recognize most immediately as Katagiri, the guy who made the best exit ever from a Godzilla movie. Anyway, all is not well with Ashura because this is a Hong Kong movie from the early 90s based on Japanese action comics from any period in history. <laughs> So our ostensibly all-powerful female lead is also a blithering idiot who constantly imperils the world simply by existing, if not supervised by men at all times. Summoned to the nearest Buddha shrine, the local high monk and team of sexy warrior abbesses inform the heroes that heaven has decreed since Ashura is still technically the magical girl antichrist, she is therefore too dangerous to just let wander around causing the apocalypse all the time, so they're supposed to imprison her inside a giant golden Buddha where her powers can be safely contained for the rest of her life. <laughs> Seems a little extreme to me, but either way, she argues her way down to a reprieve of seven more days worth of sightseeing on Earth so she can at least say goodbye to her not previously mentioned best friend, an annoying demon imp named Genie who does fart jokes because 90s movie. <laughs> Also, the three hot nuns are supposed to follow her and the two heroes around and just take her out if she uses her hell powers again. Mm. 
Elsewhere, Hell itself has a new queen, and she also wants to get her hands on Ashura's powers before they're securely locked up. Fortunately for the good guys, Hell's forces are apparently down to just these six or seven guys, so probably not that much of a problem. The Springfield police had told me that 91% of all traffic accidents are caused by you six guys. I'm ready! Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. But they do manage to trap Peacock in a block of ice and turn Genie into stone, which, through a variety of plot contrivances, eventually leads Kujaku, Genie, and Ashura spending most of the film hanging out with a brother-sister pair, the comedy male half of which has invented a teleportation machine that'll probably come in handy later on when they need to do a rescue mission to hell. <sighs> Otherwise, we're kind of doing a milder version of the first movie. There's monster business. Battle scenes. comedy <laughs> Hong Kong cheesecake for more cringy comedy Hey, 那麼試著有何高見呢? 啊, <laughs> and another big finale featuring another pretty impressive giant monster prop, which this time looks like a full-size, partially inflatable puppet being worked from overhead like a massive marionette, which must have been just a heck of a thing to be on set with. <laughs>
三个人一齐用孔雀大法。好。It probably goes without saying that Ashura gets a final reprieve from her fate to set up some potential sequels, but in this case, they did in fact stop at two of these. 我以為是我們的好朋友 what is mine? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. <laughs> it's uh, it's not exactly a giant shock why neither Peacock King movie never made its way officially westward, even if you know the material and cultural reference points, they're both almost completely incomprehensible. Designed as star vehicles for their very specific time and place in Hong Kong popular cinema, there's lots of reference jokes to other movie stars and other films the characters have made, things going on in other TV shows, movies, and politics in Japan and Hong Kong at the same time, but as time capsule spectacles, they're definitely something, and both are much easier to see now than they've been in the past, so if you think you've burned your way through the a list of what East Asian cult cinema has to offer, you can certainly do worse than these in terms of what the second tier is all about. And there are some very impressively inventive effects going on. No one else ever really did these quite like Lam Nike I did. <laughs> In any case, that concludes Schlocktober slash Schlocvember for this year. I hope you guys enjoyed, despite or perhaps along with the extended length. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. <laughs> <laughs>